So uh, one of the projects I'm working on right now is a demo for one of the meetup groups I co-organize. Co um, and the demo is going to be, like the demo on the talk is going to be on binary operations. Um, and, uh, and it's really going to be binary operations and then also web sockets and then also hardware and stuff like that. But the main focus is, um, is kind of like the, the idea of um, using binary to store things like state and uh, and like to do things like uh, like no uh, no conditional logic and stuff like that. So um, uh, and like, but the this video is really about the hardware integration that I'm gonna add in. Well, with the lag on that's really bad. Um, but basically the um, the demo is this. It's like a little block that you can move around. Let me shrink that down so it doesn't shift the screen quite as much. Um, it's a little block that you can move around using the arrow keys um, and then a, uh, a block generator um, that generates blocks. Uh, and, and you can detect collisions whenever your player character hits a particular block. Uh, there's a health meter down here, so as the player gets uh, hits collisions and stuff like that, um, the, the health goes down until it gets to zero and then the game locks up, there'll be a game over screen, stuff like that. All of this is really, really rough because I'm just trying to get the logic out. Um, and then I'll go through and polish it just a little bit. So, But the idea is that the player is going to be able to play from either a cell phone or a joystick, um, but then the block generator is going to be generated from this. Excuse the lag, I only have a, a handful of cameras, but this is a, a, touch, um, a touch device that I made for my daughter for a light project that is still in the works. So, but the, the touch controller is done, but basically each of these, uh, each of the cells here, or like each of the pads here are a capacitive touch sensor, or they're tied to a capacitive touch sensor. Um, so whenever you touch them, you, uh, like the, the capacitive touch uh, board, breakout board, um, will detect which piece you touched Oh, that lag's bad. Uh, so this breakout board will uh, detect which p uh, which one of the pads you touched, and then uh, it takes that entire state and then, and then does whatever you want with it, um, which ties in perfectly, um, not coincidentally, to how I set up the uh, the rows for this uh, this grid. So the idea will be that you could touch each of the pads on the controller, and when you touch it, it will generate a brick and send it down. Um, this board uses an ESP32 uh, feather, so it's going to be a wireless controller that talks to a server that I have locally, they'll eventually be up in the cloud, uh, and then relays it down to whatever screen um, is looking at the game uh, at any given instance, and then the players will be doing the same from, uh, from wherever they're controlling it. So uh, the whole point of that is I got the, I got the game working, um, I, yesterday I started fitting in a WebSocket server. Let's see, let me let the debugger go through. And it's got a really simple implementation right now, which is just whenever whenever a client connects, um, <clears throat> it adds a listener on the message uh, for the uh, the WebSocket information coming up. And then right now, all it's doing is generating generating an arbitrary uh, two byte uh, command code and then sending it back down to the client. Um, and then like I, I'll put this behind enums and this will end up being a type which is like what's happening in this particular message and then data which is the payload coming through the message. And maybe there'll be strings in here or not but like the whole focus of this is binary operations. Um, and then what I want to report today because it would be really hard to show in an animated GIF which is how I've been reporting most of these um, is actually the, uh, the WebSocket uh, set up for the, the touch board. Um, so I found this library, um, Arduino WebSockets, which gives a really nice implementation of a WebSocket client. Um, it follows the, uh, the um, RFC for the WebSocket implementation, so it's got the pings in the background, um, uh, and then the other, the other messages, everything that needs to happen in the background. It does this very simple um, polling-based uh, communication for the WebSocket, which is great. And I just got, got up and running on here. So if we so so I've got the client uh, for the for the touch controller. Oh God, that lag. 
Um, and then I've got the server running through uh, a step to running locally, running through a step debugger with a breakpoint here. So once we see the ESP32 connect, we should see the um, the the connection stop on the server. So let me get the monitor up, and then we'll just reset this board altogether. So this is the output from the ESP32. So if I go through and reset the board, we'll see that it connects to the Wi-Fi. Ah, connects like connect, it connects to the Wi-Fi. Then it establishes a WebSocket connection to uh, to the server, which is what we're seeing here. We could see that socket client coming through. I haven't gone through to add anything like a like a client ID that we assign stuff like that. Um, but we can then go through and relay all the messages. And then we should see on the serial monitor that arbitrary message that's being sent down. Yep, 259 coming down from the server. And that's just the combination of these two bytes being sent down. Um, so yeah, so this is really exciting. It means that, like, that now that I've got an example for this client in, I'll be able to go through and update the logic on the Feather um, to, uh, to pull the state from the touch controller and then send that, uh, that up as um, his communication from the ESP32 to the WebSocket server and then relay it down to the web page to update the game state uh, and show all the breaks. So hopefully the next video that I will record will be a really cool watching it happen implementation. That's it.